who went to Fountain Valley and was the first team all Orange Empire Conference player. We'll talk more about them, but uh, these are just two of the members of a team that ran the table. They get to the championship match. You're up at San Joaquin Delta and Long Beach City, a team that, um, you know, you felt, you know, uh, they were going to give you a tough test. They take the first two games from you. That didn't happen. I don't know if that happened all year or in years, and all of a sudden uh, you're facing not just defeat, but down 0-2 facing defeat in the championship. Yes, we're, I can't remember if we've ever been down 0-2 before in the whole time I've been here, but <laughs> it, you know, it happens and it was a big game and we responded and came, came out on top at the end. Down 0-2, they went on to win that championship game over Long Beach City, that championship match, 13-15, 8-15, and then 12, 13, and 11. And ladies, I've got to ask you, take me back to that match, because when we talk about teams facing adversity, and I don't mean this as any disrespect, you beat a lot of very good teams. It's part of what you do. You, uh, of, the t of the teams that you play during this past season, uh, very, very exactly uh, across the board, you didn't, you didn't dodge anybody. I mean, you take on and beat top teams throughout the state, and we've got some numbers to back that up in a second, but being down like that, you don't know how you're going to respond. What made you as a team respond in that championship match and, uh, and then run it off like that and win it? Um, we just came together. We were down. I mean, what can you say? We came back and took control. I mean, it wasn't easy. We mm -hmm. fought the whole time, and as you can see, it was brutal. It was point for point and play for play, but I think it showed the winning team we came through together. I think we played together better as a team than they did, mm -hmm. and that's probably our strong point. A little bit more consistent than they were, and kept us together when it got tight. So that's where we rose to the top there at the end. You know, a lot of teams, though, I mean, even good teams, when they're put in an unfamiliar situation, the proverbial backs to the wall, you don't know how you're going to respond. What kept you from responding the other way as a team? I mean, you've not really been in that situation together. I think our team, we all pulled together finally in that third game, and I don't know, we all just, it was, it all just came together right in that third game. It, we just wouldn't let down. We were not going to mm -hmm. give up, and we finally just pulled it all off together. So. Well, it was just one dramatic matchup in, uh, in a year that saw them do uh, what uh, I'm not sure many teams have, have done. Golden West has now won 92 consecutive matches. Last loss coming back in uh, November 1997, and... Um, they haven't lost a regular, uh, excuse me, they haven't lost a, a regional or state tournament match in five years. That's 30 matches. Uh, those are championship years. And um, in fact, even in one, of the, in, in one of those years, you lost in the final in the winner's bracket, battled back, beat the same team to take the championship. So you've even avenged whatever stumbling you've done in the last half dozen years. Now I gotta know, Albert, there's a, there's a secret formula somewhere hidden there. You've been doing this for 18 years, and you make it look a little, the ladies make it look a little too easy for you. Yeah, the, I mean, I think there is a secret. I don't think it's a secret, the formula. You get really good players, and they work real hard and play together as a team and see what happens. That's You've got to have fun. I mean, you, ha you have to have fun. You, you, I don't want to say you don't have a problem recruiting, but you've built, a, you've built a program where top players like these ladies, the two here, the two we'll meet in a moment, the rest of the team, want to be a part of what you do. You've put uh, an estimated 80 players in Division I from here, so all the nation knows that they can come to you and get ready-made Division I student athletes who can play at a high level and uh, you know, maintaining that's got to be fun for you as a coach, just knowing you're going to have good players to coach every year. And that's, that's way more fun than winning or championships, although those are great, but mm -hmm. you know, having players like these four and you know, the others, it's just they're just, the, can't tell you how fortunate we are, the people we get, and how much how hard they work and how good a job they do. The 1998 Volleyball Magazine Coach of the Year. Uh, there have been many other honors for Albert Gasparian over those 18 seasons, as you saw in those numbers. But I think most impressively, as we said, uh, the, the string that they've got going, nobody's been able to raise the state championship banner uh, that didn't say Golden West anyway since back in 1991. And then uh, for a couple of years before that, they did it too. So it's, it's theirs, and someone will have to fight to take it away. It's not uh, going to happen anytime soon, and we will talk more to these two young ladies who are with us, Natalie Snowden and Kinsey Ross, and then joining us in the, uh, a little bit later on in this half hour, Amanda Seiler and Rami Mitchell will be with us to talk about what it's like to be part of this program. Back with the state champions from Golden West in just a moment. Um.
Looks like it was just yesterday, Albert Gasparian, <laughs> coaching for 18 years at Golden West. You've seen some great ones come and go and tell us about moments. I'll take us back here. This was 1994, a 25 and 2 team that won the state championship uh, early on in the run. Well, that's funny, that's a long time since I've seen any of that tape. It took me a while back. <laughs> the one, Vanessa Dahl, who was just in that tape, coached with us, I was that last year? Last, last year, and um, they all kind of run together. But, yeah. Uh, and um, that's pretty fun, that's a while ago. It's kind of different to see how much bigger we are now than watching that tape even five or six years ago. Wow. Well, two of the star players, and again, we told you we're going to introduce you to uh, Ramey Mitchell and Amanda Seiler a little bit later on, but uh, we have with us in this first couple of segments, as you said, uh, a returnee to the show, Natalie Snowden, who's out on the outside in green out of Fountain Valley, headed to Auburn University, first team All-Orange Empire Conference, third on the team in kills and second in digs. And uh, to my left and on the inside here, Kinsey Ross out of Catella All-State Tournament Selection, uh, 137 digs and 79 kills and 35% uh, on attack and uh, limited hitting duty. She did what you asked her to do. Tell me about these two ladies. When you talk about the... You, Generally, even if you have a hole, there's somebody there to fill it. These two will be tough to replace. Kind of different to see how much bigger we are now than watching that tape even five or six years ago. Wow. Well, two of the star players, and again, we told you we're going to introduce you to uh, Ramey Mitchell and Amanda Seiler a little bit later on, but uh, we have with us in this first couple of segments, as you said, uh, a returnee to the show, Natalie Snowden, who's out on the outside in green out of Fountain Valley, headed to Auburn University. First team All-Orange Empire Conference, third on the team in kills and second in digs. And uh, to my left and on the inside here, Kinsey Ross out of Catella All-State Tournament Selection. Uh, 137 digs and 79 kills and 35% uh, on attack and uh, limited hitting duty. She did what you asked her to do. Tell me about these two ladies. When you talk about the, you, generally, even if you have a hole, there's somebody there to fill it. These two will be tough to replace next year. Very tough. Um, I think Natalie might have been making that part up about how wide it took in the finals to win and coming back in the third game because she had a concussion and I'm not sure she really remembers <laughs> much about the whole day on Sunday and she ran into the bench and hit her head on a chair and was pretty dinged up. Kinsey who actually has a little bad knee who was, saw some limited action we had to kind of milk her through the season came in and was unbelievable and did a good job and kind of filled the role that Natalie injured and they switched spots and you know just came through and they're both just great people and did a great job the last two years and it will be very hard to lose them. Natalie will be really hard and was a real steadying force and did that and Kinsey, sir, I can honestly say in the 18 years I've been coaching at Golden West, she is the funniest player that I've ever <laughs> coached in them. So more, actually as much as on the court as her just personality and keeping things light it will be really tough to replace. Boy, that is a lot of pressure <laughs> right there. <laughs> now, what, what are you going to do? Have you decided uh, what, how's the knee holding up and um, um, what's the next step for you? Well, actually, I'm in the process of deciding right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm going to have another knee surgery here next week. Okay. So um, we'll see from there. See how nasty it looks in there? Yeah, we'll see what goes on. As you kind of look back at, uh, you know, this experience, and when you, you know, I, I've talked to a lot of athletes over the years, and when you're taken away from it for even a day, when you're sidelined a little bit by a knee, or, <coughs> or something forces you to look at it in a little different way, well, you change your whole outlook on it. Uh, what did that teach you about w this team and about how much you love the game? Uh, definitely, um, when you're not, when I'm not playing, it just makes me want to play even harder. So when I'm out there, I, I appreciate everything, and I think I even work harder once I get out there, so definitely made me a stronger player so any truth to the rumor that you made a slippery spot on the floor so Natalie would fall and hit her head and <laughs> no <laughs> it's all rumors <laughs> I <wouldn't hurt> Natalie. <laughs> tell me a little bit about what uh, you know what this run has been like for you because I mean you know you girls I mean you play you play volleyball here you know what kind of reputation you're going into at Golden West and uh, maintaining that y you've told me this before it's not a pressure it's an expectation though right yeah, it was, it's been a real fun run the last two years because we haven't lost a match and it's been great and I've never been on a team that hasn't lost a match so it's been, it's been fun, it's been a challenge and I'm going to miss it but it's been worth it so. Now tell me what you, uh, what you like about Auburn University and can you cry War Eagle? <laughs> um, I really <laughs> liked it when I went back there and enjoyed the recruiting trip and everything. I enjoyed the area, it's a total different culture, everything was different. Yeah. I think it'll just be a lot of fun, new adventure for me so. 
Well, you'll, uh, it's beautiful in the south, and Auburn is a true old southern town. I have been mm -hmm. there before. Tell me a little bit about some of your teammates that aren't here tonight, because it, there's not a ton of sophomores. There's going to be a lot of players back, but there are. There, uh, tonight we had a, a, a dental visit that kept one of the other veterans from joining us. Yeah, that's Grace Boyd. She'll be going with me to Auburn also. So. Mm -hmm. um, she had her wisdom teeth pulled today, but um, she did a great job this year. She's very consistent, very steady. And then there's Roxanne Orsini, who was very good on the right side, really good hitter. Look for next year to be very good. And then Sarah Bougard did a good job on the outside also. She's a great hitter, came from Santa Barbara to us this year, but they did a great job. There's others, do you want me to? Sure, no, that's all right. Okay. I mean, we're gonna, we're, we'll continue to work through okay. them a little bit. You can tell me about these two ladies we're going to meet here in a minute because uh, you're now the veteran. So, and if you truly are the funniest player that coach has ever had, tell me something great about these two ladies that we're going to meet here in just a moment, uh, Amanda and Ramey. Oh gosh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Holding under the pressure. Yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, Ramey just—if you think I'm funny, Ramey just cracks everybody up. As soon as she gets on that court, it's just kind of a relief. And then Amanda's awesome to play with. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. if there's ever been a setter that I've enjoyed playing with, it's Amanda Seiler. She really kept keeps you into the game. I mean, when people are down, Amanda's there just to pick you up. I mean, um, she's just awesome. She just takes control right from the beginning. And Ramey, Ramey's strong, strong middle. She gets up there, so it's awesome playing with her, and I love and anybody on the court that I wouldn't rather play with than those two girls right there, so I love them. There, I mean, you did it right, and you took good care of him, and congratulations. Take good care of your knee, and keep us posted, and I hope all goes well for you. I will, thank you. Thanks, Kinsey Ross. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank good you. luck, Natalie. Have a great time in Auburn. Thank and, you. And um, just uh, enjoy the rest of your time at Golden West, Albert. You're gonna bring those other two ladies in now. Albert Gasparian, as we go to break, we've got another year to look at here. Daryl Cruz, our producer, tells us again that I think this is 95. We might see as we head out to break. You know, but you haven't aged a day. Well, I'm just glad that you didn't go back when I had the mustache so that we went um, we didn't go quite that far back, but it's, boy, that's funny. That's 1996. That was 96, yeah. That's, um, that was a year where they went 26 and 1, and that was right smack dab in the middle of the current run of state titles. Back with the Golden West wrestlers in just a moment. Are you done? Since this point in time, they had, well, they had won one before this year started, and then they reeled off 91 consecutive match wins. That was the year where you guys, where your ladies rallied back, won the championship. The year before that, um, after losing uh, on the final day, won the championship, and then you've reeled off three consecutive seasons, Albert Gasparian's Golden West wrestlers, without losing a match. We are joined now by two of the present and future stars, two of the Grizzly veteran sophomores who are moving on, joined us in the first uh, half of the show. Now we're joined. On the outside is Rami Mitchell, who's from Narbonne, so she can tell us all about bumping elbows with Bray Linda, but that's a story for another day. Uh, she was a second team All-Orange all Empire Conference middle blocker, 146 kills, a 425 attack percentage, and uh, second on the team with 87 blocks. To, yeah, good numbers too. And to the inside is Amanda Seiler, who uh, out of La Habra, they had a terrific year this year without you, by the way. First team All-State selection, All-State tournament selection, Orange Empire Conference, most valuable player. There's even more, but we'll get, we'll get to all that <laughs> a little bit later on. Albert, tell me about these two ladies, uh, because this is an example of why you love your job, because yep. you come back next year and you got players like this who will be waiting for you. I'd say Ramey has a, she's a little less experience is less developed than Amanda is, but has an awful lot of athletic ability and potential. And I would say she would be our most improved player over the course of the season mm -hmm. that you know came out. And that's a middle block is a very tough position mm -hmm. to play in. In especially with us, I mean, I can be pretty demanding on them. Oh yeah. And <laughs> you know, we do some things. I want them running the offense with just the way they would if they were in the big time, you know, mm -hmm. Division One, Top Ten school. And it's hard for them to understand that because it's way quicker and way faster and more expectations than they're used to. And it was hard for her at the beginning, but she caught on about, I'd say about halfway through the season and had a great year and will be, I think, have an outstanding year next year. Amanda, who came back from Santa Clara's, I mean, she was a big time recruit out of high school as a hitter, had shoulder surgery, 
and set in high school her first couple of years, hadn't set for a while. And I mean, her, she's a legit top 10 recruit as a setter after next year. I mean, she'll be, the, every school that watched her this year asked about her, anybody that wants to set her. I'd say, I think she's a wild card hanging out there for somebody that needs a big time setter that, you know, by next year, it's hard. She'll get better this spring and we'll work on her location and her accuracy, but she's, I mean, she's big, left-handed and very, very good. Well, I don't know, uh, you guys ought to be feeling pretty good about it right about now. Coach uh, Gasparian's seen a lot of players over the years, but let's talk a little bit about the reputation of coming here and the opportunity to play, be part of this program. Um, you know, you both obviously knew about it. You knew where you were coming. Mm -hmm. um, Ramey, for you, you know, Coach mentions it's a chance for you to elevate your game by being around mm -hmm. and on the court every day with players across the board like the one next but, to you. Yeah. I've never really had like an opportunity to be on a team where all the positions are widely stacked. Mm -hmm. Everybody's equally as good as everybody. There's no star, but everybody's just amazing to play with. I mean, just to come from not not being on a high school team where you know it was just kind of like a rec league, mm -hmm. and then to come to Golden West and just to see the skill level was amazing, and it was a great. I think it was like the best. Like, what's the word looking for? It's like the best decision I've made in my life to come to Golden West. The decision to come back here wasn't necessarily one you wanted to have to make. Your body forced you to, to make some choices. How's the shoulder, first of all? And I can tell you there have been a few Olympians who've responded uh, and come back fine from shoulder surgery or changed their game a little bit. And, uh, yeah. and um, you know, was it, was it tough for you to go through the role change and all the physical, physical um, challenges? I think I did okay c coming back from a hitter as um, a setter because Albert never put a limit on how much I could hit as a setter where a lot of coaches would say you're hitting way too much mm -hmm. but um, the shoulder feels fine but I really enjoy setting um, you know and it's nice that I was able to hit as much as I could and mm -hmm. um, run a good offense with good hitters they made me look a lot better you know being inexperienced as a setter so it's fun. But being experienced in the game I mean you're kind of the quarterback it gives you an opportunity mm -hmm. really to you know, go even almost a little deeper and put much you know to, to use as a setter, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it helped a lot. Well, these two ladies have been a part uh, have in maintaining what is an, a remarkable run. If you've just joined us, we've been talking to the Golden West wrestlers who uh, have, as we told you, not lost in a long time. <laughs> in fact, uh, they reeled off another state championship this year. They won 92 consecutive matches. Perfect match record again this year. They won state titles in 79, 84, 88, 90, 91, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and the year 2000. And uh, doesn't get any better than that. We'll be back with Albert Gasparian and the Golden West wrestlers in a moment. Well, today we're talking to champions from Golden West and champions of college football. We'll learn our play of the day. Uh, no Orange Countyans in sight except Chris Ricks on the sideline, and he watched as the Heisman Trophy winner Chris Wenke was turned inside out by the Oklahoma Sooners, who finished the college campaign undefeated, and thus will wrap up a national championship, and perhaps most impressively, they get the OCN. Play of the day. That's sarcasm for those of you who didn't get it. However, uh, there is no sarcasm when we say there is no more dominant college volleyball program. And in fact, you can pick up almost any sport and be hard pressed to find one that has had more success than Albert Gasparian's Golden West volleyball squad has in his 18 years at the helm. They've won 92 percent of the time that uh, he's been able to play with them. We've got the chance to just a couple more minutes with Ramey Mitchell on the outside and Amanda Seiler on the inside. Talk a little bit about this team. Tell me what we can expect next year because, uh, you know, Ramey, I mean, there's a, we know there's always a lot of talent. The expectations are out there. Um, this team hasn't lost in a long time. Uh, I know what one of the goals would be at the start of the year, but uh, what's the team going to be like? I think we're going to bring the same heat as we did this year. I mean, we all finally gelled together towards the end. And I mean, it's a, it's a big shoes to fill over the past couple years, but I think we're going to do really well. I think we're going to bring out, make it nine. That's and that's pretty impressive. Um, you know, this is a team that, especially in postseason, is just almost uh, difficult to even trip up. 
Growing up in this area, playing club ball, the level, you know, is it almost like an extension of that? I mean, there's a lot of fire in the eyes of women's volleyball players in Orange County. Yeah, there's some tough girls out here. Um, and with the next year, I mean, we're losing really good players, you mm -hmm. know, Natalie and Grace and Kinsey. So there's, you know, big shoes to fill next year in those positions. But, I mean, I think you can expect the same intensity from us next year as, you know, within a year. Well, we'd like to thank the ladies for joining us tonight and Coach Gasparian. He has 80 players over the years in the Division I out of Golden West, and nine of them played this year, and uh, he's got a whole bunch more on this team. Congratulations, ladies. Thank Congratulations, you. Coach. Okay. We hope to see you here next year. Hope All right. Can. Golden West has done it again. It's their night. It, again, was uh, kind of their decade and I guess their millennium. <laughs> That's Sports Talk.